I've been playing Cross Tales because you have no time to game. Welcome to the next When the Credits Roll review. A series in which I only review a game once the credits have rolled. So you have some faith that I may know a little bit about what I'm talking about maybe. So first up the basic details. Cross Tales was released on the 19th or the 20th of July, depending on which system you got it from. Steam was a little bit late for some reason. Um, in July 2023 and was developed by Rideon and published by Chemco. And it's out on pretty much everything of the time. So if you're watching this several years from now and there's new consoles, maybe it's out for them, I don't know. I'm not, I can't see into the future yet. It took me roughly 25 hours to complete the first path through the game. But just be know there's two main storylines and multiple endings for them. So it can take a lot, lot longer than that, depending on how much you want, time you want to put into it and which difficulty you choose. Hundian versus Felis, cats versus dogs. A tale as old as time. Cross Tales sees us take on the role of one or two of two characters. Uh, a doggo or Hundian from the kingdom of Ravenfoot, ironically called Felix, which I'd consider a cat's name, but what can you do? Or a cat? A Felis from the Republic of Hidek, named Shamar, I think, that's how you pronounce it, each with their own tale to tell. The two countries have been at war for over a decade, and these young pups and kittens will find themselves thrust into an ever-increasing danger as they both attempt to do what's right for each of their nations. If we're honest, the plot here isn't deep, complex story like your Final Fantasy tactics or your triangle strategies, but it's still fun. While well, having overtures to that style of storytelling, it's not as complex though. It is one of like both class division, politics of nobles, and all that sort of stuff, and the effects of war and things, but doesn't go too deep into it. And there's also a sense that something else might be going on in the background. It's fun, and I enjoyed the characters surprising the mind, especially from the Hundian side. Maybe that's because I'm a dog person. I mean, cat allergies doesn't really help make you a cat person. But what is a cross tails? Well, it's a turn-based tactics game that wears its inspiration like sleeve. If you played the likes of Final Fantasy Tactics or Tactic Ogre, you'd know what you're in for. But that isn't a bad thing, not at all. So before we go into the actual battles, uh, what can we do before that? What's the setup? Well, we get a map screen that has various nodes or points on it. Uh, the only one usually accessible is the next story segment, but that doesn't mean that's the only thing you can do. Oh no, we have lots to sort out around the characters before battle, and this is actually quite a big chunk of the game. So each of our characters has three classes. Two you can choose, and one that's specific to that dude, like a special class, apart from the generic soldiers you can hire, all of the characters have their own special class and the generic ones tend to be like soldier or something. You'll have a lot of characters there. Some, as I said, are story specific characters that join you as you go through the, the playthroughs and others you can hire. And I ended up with about 10-ish characters on each playthrough, like a mix of the story and generic. So, as I said, you get to mix the two other classes. And it's quite a flat few classes to choose from. So if you want to be a bard ninja or a preacher dark monk, that's all good. Each class has its own rank, separate to the character's level. And every class maxes out at level at rank 5. This is important as raising the ranks of different classes lets you unlock even more classes for that character, specifically for that character. So you're encouraged to mix it up as you're playing through the game. So now each class also has its own skill tree that you have to spend gold to unlock the new skills in. Each skill has like a max level and this is usually between one to five. Some skills are one, some two, some up to five before they max out that skill. And each level, higher level costs a little bit more gold each time. 
so that can get quite expensive especially for the later classes um, you also to unlock further skills in the skill tree have to have the level of previous skills to a certain point so you might have to raise one skill to level three before the next skill unlocks so it's there's quite a lot to choose from how you want to build up each skill tree or you can just completely max them out and blow all your, all your gold there's a variety to the skill types as well so you have straight attack skills which usually have a side effect such as poisoning the enemy sealing them or something like that then you have a lot of healing skills buffs debuffs then there's passive skills which are blue in the menu and beast skills which are gold colored so make sure to read the descriptions and see what you actually want to spend your gold on as doing that will save you some grinding unless you just unlock everything like i said so you may have noticed i said the words passive skills now depending on your dude's level you can take a number of passive skills the higher your character's level the more passive skills they can have these take the form of like a permanent buff um, and they actually come from all of the classes you've got so every passive skill you unlock you can choose from you don't have to have that class equipped so it's a good job it's a good, good thing to go through multiple classes unlocking lots of passive skills so you get a good choice and these can do things like allowing you to wield weapons that, that class isn't meant to um, giving resistances and all sorts of things so now we have our class actually set up we've chosen the two we've chosen our skills we have to equip everyone so everyone can have a weapon some classes can have shields you know, armor and accessories and these are all kind of affected by the classes you've got you've got equipped at the time so certain classes can equip certain weapon types and such so the equipment itself can be gotten as rewards in battle from killing enemies or bought in a shop the shop which has a cool little feature called sample which allows you to go through and select all the items in the shop that you want and then it'll equip it all and buy it all in one go um, you, you can also see the ever-increasing cost and it's even an auto-equip feature depending on the stat you select so if you want to purchase the best attack items for a character you can just auto equip it in the sample menu and it will choose it all for you this is actually also in the normal equipping menu for the character as well you can go through instead of buying items it goes through all the items you have already owned and will auto equip them so it's cool makes things a little bit quicker and it's all based around um, a stat you've chosen so it's attack defense magic attack or magic defense and it will max out the equipment based on that uh, the next feature you can do is also enchant our weapons and armor with extra special effects based on orbs so for a very small fee you can attach the usually up to three depending on the item some items have like use up some of the slots because they come with special effects already and these orbs will add other ones and they're basic things like giving you more hp giving you an attack buff maybe it does a special effect of some sort like sealing or poison you know you know the usual sort of thing it's just a little extra that makes your character a little bit stronger and don't worry when you upgrade all your items you can actually transfer the orbs to the new items again for a small fee and it's really simple you just select the item you want that's got the orbs you want and you select the item you want to move it to and bing bang bosh done so while we're thinking about items it's worth noting that you get the usual fare so your healing potions your mana potions item status effect removal and all that sort of thing but it's initially limited to only nine items until you find magic boxes these actually increase your item limit um, they can also be bought in another menu in the shop uh, but this only applies to consumables by the way so to your potions and such not equipment you can have like up to 99 of them or maybe more and everybody went above 99 of one equipment type another item you get albeit quite rarely is the golden bone this is used in the special menu in the shop where it's exchanged for top tier items they're all fancy gold text items so they all come with special effects and all sorts um, these items are pretty cool but i'd recommend saving 
spending your golden bones until you know the build you want for your character so you're not wasting it on something that you're going to change later on another thing you'll be selecting in this menu is your strategy now these are pretty simple you acquire quite often strategies as mission completion rewards uh, some can be exchanged for golden bones and very rarely you'll find them in chests and such and all they are is they give a small buff to your team uh, for the most part I had one that just gave me more gold so and it's was kind of like permanently equipped every battle I went to I just got a bit extra gold but you got more than that some give you resistance to elements um, special effects some will make you having certain equip weapons equipped more powerful they it just sits outside the normal menu and is a permanent buff as long as you've got it equipped and you can only change it outside of battle you can't change your strategies mid battle the last main bit related to outside of battle is the trophies basically as you achieve certain goals in the game like doing x amount of damage changing to showing new classes you unlock trophies and each one you come across gives you a tasty reward so it's definitely worth checking in on just to get that cheeky bonus so we've chosen our class equipped our dude selected our strategy and spent all our gold and now it's time for battle this comes in two flavors story battles which progress the story obviously and free battles which are repeatable battles that are unlocked as we progress through the story the free battles are where you'll grind out all the the all important gold to unlock shiny new skills for your classes but it's worth checking because there are different types of free battles one that seems to give you like cp which is what class points which raises your class one that seems to give you more xp and one type that gives you more gold and then they they kind of level up as you go through the game so as the new ones you'll get new types of them so always check which one you're doing don't just go for the latest one because if you want gold that might not be the best one for it now is there a lot of grinding yes and no for me i did quite a bit just because i wanted to see all the skills and classes and i liked unlocking everything to its max in a class so yeah i needed a lot of gold to do that but the game comes with a uh, pretty cool auto battle feature that makes that grinding a little bit easier but do you need to grind well i reckon you need to do a little bit just to make sure your level's high enough to deal with the next story mission but do you need to do a lot i don't think so definitely don't need to do as much as i did so like i said my first run through took me about 25 hours i reckon you could probably cut that back quite a bit if you didn't do as much of gold grinding as i did but damn it you if you're gonna give me the chance to have passives that offer random buffs and max out classes i'm gonna do it i'm gonna see how far i can push it but anyway Battles themselves are a ta turn based tactics affair, very reminiscent of Final Fantasy Tactics. It uses an agility based turn order. Basically, the higher your agility, the higher up the turn order you'll be. On a turn, you have a move action and a skill action, or like just a generic action, and you can take both. Um, and you can do it either way around, so you can do your like attack action first and then move, or vice versa. Uh, the like generic actions take up the option of like attack item defend or then you'll have menus for each class you have um, the skills in the classes cost mp now interestingly you start with pretty much zero mp there are variants depending on your class but you don't start out with max in like most games and then run out you start at the lowest and then each time the character's turn comes around they gain some X more XP depending on what they did in the previous one. So if you just straight up defend, you get quite a big amount. If you've done a skill, it's lesser. You're, the, the lesser amount gained. Um, unless, of course, you're on the easier difficulty, then you do start out with max MP. But anyway, so yeah, the skills cost MP and you might have to wait before you can use some. So that's the, the very basics, um, but there's more that can happen. Well, firstly attacking an enemy we need to take into account their resistances so some are weak or strong against certain elements or status ailments and some even resist normal attacks which is a bugger the status ailments you can get hit by are sickness 
which deals damage over time, sealing, which stops any of your abilities, paralysis, which just stops you altogether, and delayed death, which, yeah, in X amount of turns, you die. Um, when your character runs out of HP, your character is knocked out, or if delayed death has happened, you're knocked out. And then you have a certain number of turns to revive them. Um, and the amount of turns you have depends on the difficulty setting you've got. The higher the difficulty, the less turns you have before they retreat from battle. And when I say retreat from battle, they did. There is a way of actually avoiding death, and this is the guts mechanic. Basically, some abilities um, or passive and stuff give you a guts percentage. This is basically when you take a hit that would take you below zero HP, there's a chance you will survive with one HP. So if you have a guts of 50%, you've got a 50-50 chance of that killing blow leaving you with one HP. Now, just a warning, keep a ninja around, as they have an ability to ignore the guts effect entirely. And this is very much needed for one particular battle. The ninja ability I spoke of leads us to the next mechanic, which is beast power. This unlocks after a certain point, and it's a special move system. As you take or deal damage in battle, the gauge fills up. And each time the bar fills, completely you get one beast power pip to spend with a max of like five pips they look like little teeth it's kind of cool these can be spent on using beast skills they don't use mp they just use these pips and they come as big attacks or awesome support kills think of something along the lines of like final fantasy limit break ability um and good use of these can really affect the battle and like i said the ninja has one they're special big attack ignores guts completely and that's very much needed like I said for one battle but I'm not going to spoil anymore just make sure you get a ninja uh, while running around the map you can count into other things and these are chests which come in normal variety which can be infinitely farmed basically when you complete a story mission and unlock the free battle version the chest will always be in the same place and it will always be there and re-renewed every time you go into that free battle. The other chests are golden chests. Once these are open and you've taken all the shiny golden level items as rewards, that's it, they're done. They don't respawn with new items in. But beware, chests can be trapped, so make sure to carry magic keys with you, which is an item that can be bought in the shop and it ignores the traps on chests. Speaking of traps, they're the second thing that we can kind of on a map. Um, Without specific strategy or passives or anything like that that let you see the traps, you can just run into them. And they usually give you like damage over time or status effect. And they can just be, they're just an extra annoyance that can happen. You can also lay your own traps, which is pretty cool. Uh, the maps themselves are pretty cool as they have a lot going on visually and they have a lot of verticality as well. So it would be fighting over rooftops, up mountains, in castles, and more. Overall, it has quite a bit going on, and it all works well. And it's actually very transparent in what is happening. Everything is available for you to see, from the stats of the enemies, to what skills they have, to what you have, to what will potentially happen. Obviously things like blocking and missing and stuff like that are RNG based, but other than that, it's all very transparent. You're not going to randomly try hitting an enemy and suddenly find out that they're resistant to it it will tell you so what is good about the game well the class system and the overall gameplay is it being its open nature allowing you to see everything with solid descriptions actually makes for a really good time because you know what's going to happen and you know how everything's affecting everything you don't feel like anything's hidden from you and along with that the gameplay itself is just enjoyable as a tactics game it's really solid and enjoyable and there's so much flexibility especially when you get bring in the class system and everything it just makes it great and as i've always say having that flexibility having that choice choice is king in games on the negative side the story okay i don't want to say it's negative as such it's serviceable and i enjoyed it i felt it was fun the different routes were interesting to see but at the same time, it's not going to win any awards. It doesn't do anything we haven't really seen before. So I'd describe it as more of like a comfy as opposed to, say, thrilling. 
even given its nature. It doesn't really go deep. It isn't complex. So don't don't go in expecting that. Now, normally I'd give the critic score before giving my own final thoughts, but at the time of writing this script, it doesn't have a score on Metacritic on any of the consoles yet, which is unusual for me. I'm only used to that from when I play very old games, not new. This is this is a new feeling for me, playing a game before everyone else has reviewed it. What's going on? So I went into this with a little bit of trepidation. After all, it is a Chemco title, even if it's Ridian, which are one of the better developers under Chemco. But I was glad to be proven wrong. Crosstails is a really good tactical title, and I think any tactics fan would enjoy it. The story is just interesting enough to keep you playing, and the brilliant class and battle system will keep you coming back for more. So it's a really enjoyable and in some ways comfy game. So my final rating is must play. Thank <laughs> you.